As we journey back to the 13th century, a time of mighty empires and fierce warriors, we find ourselves on the brink of a pivotal event, the Battle of Ain Jalut. During this time the Mongol Empire had grown rapidly, swallowing up vast territories under the rule of the formidable Genghis Khan and his successors. With a reputation for ferocity and a knack for tactical innovation, the Mongols had carved out an empire that stretched from the Pacific to Eastern Europe. They were a force that seemed unstoppable, a whirlwind of destruction and conquest. Meanwhile, in the heart of Egypt a new power was rising. The Mamluk Sultanate. Composed of former slaves these warriors had ascended to power with a fierce determination and a keen understanding of the political landscape. Their strength lay not only in their military prowess, but also in their ability to adapt and learn from their enemies. They were the underdogs, the unexpected challengers to the Mongol might. The stage was set for a confrontation of epic proportions. These two powers, each formidable in its own right, were destined to clash in the region of Ain Jalut. The stakes were high. Victory would not only determine the fate of their empires but also shape the trajectory of world history. The battle was more than a mere military confrontation, it was a clash of cultures, a test of wills and strategies, a moment where the old world met the new. And at the heart of it all was a question that hung heavy in the air. Could the Mamluks, with their fewer numbers and resources, stand against the seemingly invincible Mongol horde? As the Mongols advanced, the Mamluks prepared. They knew the odds they faced, yet they refused to back down. This was not just about survival, it was about their place in the world. It was about proving that they were more than former slaves, they were warriors, leaders, the future of a proud nation. As the Mongol horde approached the region of Ain Jalut, the Mamluks braced themselves for a battle that would change the course of history. Under the scorching sun, two formidable forces prepared to clash at Ain Jalut. On one side we had the Mongols, an army known for their unparalleled horse archery and lightning-fast cavalry tactics, led by the indomitable Kitbuka Noyan. Their force was a blend of seasoned warriors and fresh recruits, but all were trained with the same Mongol discipline that had conquered vast swaths of Asia and Eastern Europe. On the other side stood the Mamluks, a formidable force of slave soldiers who had risen to the ranks of military elite in the Egyptian Sultanate. Their leader Kutuz was a man of cunning and courage. He knew the odds were stacked against him but he also knew the terrain of Ain Jalut like the back of his hand. The Mongols, masters of the steppe, were now in a foreign land, a land of mountains and valleys, far removed from the open plains they were accustomed to. This was an advantage Kutuz intended to exploit, positioning his forces in the highlands overlooking the Valley of Springs, Ain Jalut. Meanwhile, Kitbuka, aware of the terrain disadvantage, planned to use the Mongols' superior mobility to his advantage. He knew the key to victory was a swift, decisive attack that would scatter the Mamluk forces before they could fully assemble. As the day wore on, both sides checked their weapons, their armor, and their resolve. The Mongols, with their composite bows and curved sabers, and the Mamluks with their heavy maces and kite shields, were a sight to behold. Each soldier, whether Mongol or Mamluk, knew the gravity of the battle to come. This was not just a clash of armies, it was a clash of cultures, of destinies. The sun began to dip towards the horizon, casting long shadows over the battle-ready forces. The air was thick with anticipation. Soldiers whispered prayers, leaders gave rousing speeches and horses stamped impatiently sensing the tension in the air. With strategies in place and weapons at the ready, the stage was set for a battle of epic proportions. The air was thick with anticipation as the Mongols and Mamluks faced each other on the battlefield. In the stark expanse of Ain Jalut, two formidable forces squared off, their eyes locked in a dance of war. The Mongols, renowned for their ruthless aggression and horse archery, initiated the assault. Like a storm, they rained arrows upon the Mamluk lines, hoping to break their spirits before the clash of steel even began. But the Mamluks, they were no ordinary adversaries. Trained from childhood as slave soldiers, their resilience was as legendary as their loyalty. As the Mongol arrows blotted out the sun, the Mamluks held firm, their shields forming a wall of steel against the deadly rain. Then with a deafening roar, the Mamluks counterattacked. Their cavalry charged, their lances aimed at the heart of the Mongol lines, the ground shook under the thundering hooves, and for a moment, time seemed to stand still. The Mongols taken aback scrambled to reform their lines, but the Mamluk onslaught was relentless. The turning point of the battle came unexpectedly. 
Kutuz, the Mamluk Sultan, hurled a weapon into the Mongol ranks, a symbolic gesture that echoed through the battlefield. Inspired by their leader's bravery, the Mamluk forces redoubled their efforts. They surged forward, pushing the Mongols back inch by inch, foot by foot. The battle raged on, the ebb and flow of combat painting a grim tableau of war. The Mongols fought fiercely, their famed tenacity on full display, but against the Mamluks' indomitable spirit and strategic brilliance, even the mightiest falter. The sun began to set, casting long shadows over the blood-soaked fields of Ain Jalut. The clashing of swords grew sporadic, the cries of war turned into whispers. The battle was waning, the outcome becoming evident. As the dust settled, it became clear that the tide of the battle had turned, the Mamluks had managed to halt the seemingly unstoppable Mongol advance. In the aftermath of the battle the landscape of Ain Jalut bore the scars of a brutal conflict. The once vibrant green plains were now stained with the blood of warriors, the echoes of their war cries and clashing swords still reverberating in the silent air. When the dust settled, the Mongol forces, once an unstoppable tide that swept across the lands, found themselves in a hasty retreat. They had been invincible, their name alone enough to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies. But here, on the fields of Ain Jalut, they had met their match. Their retreat was not just physical but symbolic too, a retreat from the myth of their invincibility. As the Mongols retreated the Mamluks, these slave soldiers turned rulers, began to consolidate their power. Their victory at Ain Jalut wasn't just a military triumph, it was a statement. They were no longer the underdogs but a force to be reckoned with. The Mamluks had proved that the Mongols were not invincible, that they could be beaten, and this realization spread like wildfire across the region. In the days and weeks that followed, the Mamluks worked tirelessly to strengthen their hold over their territories. They built fortifications, formed alliances, and prepared for any future threats. Their victory had given them confidence and a newfound respect among their subjects and neighboring kingdoms. But it wasn't just the Mamluks who were changed by this battle. The Mongols too were transformed. After Ain Jalut they were more cautious, more strategic. They had learned that they were not invincible, that there were forces out there capable of matching their might. This realization would shape their future campaigns and strategies. Yet, amid all the changes and transformations, one thing remained constant. The memory of the battle, the bravery, the strategies, the victory, and the defeat. These memories were etched into the minds of those who survived and passed down through the generations. The Battle of Ain Jalut was a turning point, marking the first time the Mongols had been decisively defeated it was a victory that would echo through the ages. The echoes of Ain Jalut can still be heard today, as we reflect on its lasting impact. This monumental confrontation between the Mongols and the Mamluks in the 13th century wasn't simply another notch in the belt of warfare. It was a turning point that reshaped the future of the Middle East and, by extension, the world. At the heart of the Battle of Ain Jalut was the struggle for control and dominance. The Mongols, an empire known for their ruthless expansion, met their match in the Mamluks. This band of slave soldiers who had ascended to power in Egypt displayed an indomitable spirit and strategic prowess that halted the Mongol juggernaut. The victory at Ain Jalut marked the first definitive defeat for the Mongols. Their aura of invincibility was shattered, their momentum stalled. This was a significant setback, one that dampened their expansionist ambitions. The Mongols would never again advance beyond the borders established at Ain Jalut. But the ripples of Ain Jalut extended far beyond the battlefield. The Mamluks' triumph ensured their continued rule over Egypt and Syria, and their influence would shape the region for centuries to come. Their success also served as a beacon of hope for other nations, a tangible proof that the Mongol tide could be turned. The Battle of Ain Jalut also had profound implications for the spread of Islam. With the Mamluks at the helm, Egypt and Syria remained predominantly Muslim territories. Had the Mongols prevailed, the religious landscape of the Middle East might have been drastically different. The echoes of Ain Jalut reverberate through the annals of history, influencing the course of nations and shaping the world as we know it. The battle stands as a vivid reminder of the power of resilience and strategic acumen, of the potential for the seemingly weak to triumph over the seemingly invincible. And so, the Battle of Ain Jalut remains a testament to the ebb and flow of empires, a pivotal moment in the grand tapestry of history.